So what we've got here is Harley Davidson's hugely anticipated Street 750. This isn't so much so a motorcycle as a new chapter in the Harley Davidson story. Just think about it, it's the first new platform in 14 years since the V-Rod. And this motorcycle too is taking Harley Davidson into a different direction. This is not a motorcycle for the typical Harley Davidson enthusiast. This motorcycle is meant to draw a new, younger rider into the Harley Davidson fold. So the question is, what exactly have you got here? On the design front, the Street 750 is a cool mashup of Harley Davidson's V-Rod and the regular classic cruisers. I really like the bikini fairing for the headlamp and the boots for the shocks. But you can see that everything has also been scaled down to make the street easier to manage in terms of size. For instance, at 13.1 litres, the teardrop tank is smaller than usual. At 2,225 millimetres, the Street 750 is 30 millimetres shorter than a Sportster Iron 883. So even though it isn't all that smaller, it does look less bulky, which might be a disappointment for some riders. But if you are interested in riding, then smaller and lighter is the right way forward. Now some people will be a little taken aback with the Street 750 size because this is a couple of sizes smaller than your typical Harley Davidson, which is really a poser's problem. As a motorcycle, the smaller, lighter motorcycle is the better motorcycle. The street has also done away with a quirk that many cruisers have had. Now the ignition combination switch is thankfully not located at an awkward position. It is at a slightly different position here under the handlebar. But it's easy to access and it also doubles up as your handlebar lock. But the Street 750 feels very sparingly equipped. Just look at the LCD display on the speedometer. It only shows two trip meters. There's no fuel gauge, no range indicator, gear indicator or clock. There's no pass flash switch or side stand warning either. And what disappoints further is the general finish that you see. It's when you stand, stare and look closely at the Street 750 you realize that Harley Davidson have cut a couple of corners. And that isn't so much so as a drop in real quality as in terms of the feel-good factor that you would associate with the Harley Davidson brand. But luckily when you hit the road, that just gets dropped behind. That's because Harley has spared nothing when developing this motor. It isn't your typical 75-degree V-twin bushrod and air-cooled engine. The 749cc 60-degree V-twin liquid-cooled Revolution X motor from Harley-Davidson is all new and the star in this package. Harley may hate to say it, but they have thrown tradition and status quo out of the window when building this motor. What will be a bit of a disappointment for some is this. The soundtrack is more of a purr than a roar. But then what are those screaming eagle exhausts for? But on every other count, this Revolution X motor is an absolute rock star. This motor is just hugely impressive when it comes to refinement. You can't feel any vibes from it, whether you're puttering around at low speeds in the city or hammering at the red line. I actually ended up hitting the red line a couple of times because it just didn't feel like it was strained at all. Another pleasant surprise is the light clutch and the smooth shifting six-speed gearbox. 
What matters on a motorcycle like this is the torque that's available and how readily it's available. Well, on both fronts, the Street 750 does beautifully. It's got ample torque, it's available really nice and low in the rev range, so you don't have to work the motor hard. You can crawl around in city traffic, in the higher gears, without worrying about gear changes. Just zip through smoothly, silently, and when you do wind the throttle open, you'll find that it's got a nice, strong mid-range and power just tapers off slightly towards the red line. Harley never quotes BHP figures for their motors. But if we had to guess, we would say the street makes roughly 55 to 60 BHP. But what is absolutely clear is that there's plenty of performance on tab. These are some speeds that we saw on the speedometer today. First gear, 60 kilometers an hour. Second, 90. Third, 120. Fourth, 140. With fifth and sixth available to cruise at a lazy RPM at 130, 140 kilometers an hour, if it catches your fancy. Cruising at triple digit speeds, you'll find that that 1534 millimeter wheelbase is really handy in keeping you steady and stable. But the street can be enjoyed in more places than just the open highway. The spec sheet says that this motorcycle weighs roughly 220 kilograms. Thankfully, you don't feel much of that when you're out on the street. In our city traffic, you'll find that the steering range is great to wriggle through traffic. The steering movement itself is light, so you can really work your way through city traffic without much of a bother. Compared to other Harley Davidsons, the Street 750 has an additional two inches of suspension travel at the front and rear, that's about that much. But it really feels like this much when you're going over rough roads because this motorcycle just soaks up bumps, potholes, speed breakers, just so much better than any other Harley Davidson I've ridden before. Ride comfort is definitely one of the highlights here. You can lean the bike further before you start scraping the pegs and the fluid steering makes it very enjoyable. The wide open handlebars give you the right amount of leverage too, although the seating position could be a bit better. The riding position would have been much nicer if the foot pegs had been about 6-7 inches further forward like this. And while Harley has an optional tall boy seat for more relaxed ergonomics, there's no such quick fix for the brakes. I was a bit disappointed with the brakes, first and foremost because the front brake really feels quite wooden at the lever and you really have to pull at it to get strong braking. And secondly is the fact that Harley Davidson isn't offering ABS even as an option and that is a big miss. But Harley is likely to rectify that pretty soon. Harley claims that the street returns roughly 18 kilometers per liter. And going by our ride, I wouldn't be surprised to see riders get even higher fuel efficiency figures. In true Harley fashion, a range of accessories and customization options will be offered for the street. So you can get your very own individual motorcycle. So the Street 750 is a Harley like none before. It isn't as showy. It isn't as big and it isn't tied down by history and in my books it is better for it. Despite having ridden practically the entire Harley Davidson range, I've never thought of owning a Harley Davidson. So in some ways the Street 750 is aimed squarely at me. And you know what? It works. This is a tempting motorcycle. It's not perfect. It could have a more lavish feel to it, it could have slightly better seating position. But aside from that, when you're in the saddle, on the road, the Street 750 just brings out the joy of motorcycling amply, in abundance. It's the reason why Harley Davidson came into being, it's the reason why we got on the motorcycles. And the price at which it is being offered, the Street 750 is clearly a win.